ชนบุรีคนใจหนักแรงเกลียดการคมแหงรักความก้าวหน้าทินเกษตรอุตสาหกรรมนานาเพชรแห่งบุรษพามีพัฒนาโรงเรียน Hello and สวัสดีครับ Welcome to my very first special video. Please be sure to stick around to the end because I have a very special surprise that I can hardly wait to tell you about. Today, I will be talking about Sak Chai Nakpayak, who was a famous Muay Thai champion in the 1950s that was murdered, and how I came about all this information. I am still currently gathering information, and sometimes new details come in weekly. The purpose of this video is to help contribute to Thai and Muay Thai history. And share information about a legend of Muay Thai. It is very rare to hear tales about fighters from older decades, especially about their life and fights in great detail. Let's get started, shall we? In 2015, I went back to Thailand to visit my family. At that time, I was still injured and heavy set. I was roughly 275 pounds. When I was there, I shared a picture with some of my family members, showing them how I used to train Muay Thai. And they thought that was pretty interesting. One of my aunties mentioned, "Oh, your grandma. Grandma has a brother that was a Muay Thai champion. He was very handsome, but somebody killed him, and that was pretty much it." From what I understand, is that nobody really knows exactly the final reason why he was murdered. But I will mention some of the stories in the newspapers and articles, as well as the public official story. I will definitely get into that a little later in the video, for sure. Okay, let's move forward. I became more curious as to who this mysterious granduncle was. I asked if we had any photos. We rummaged through a stack of framed pictures and found his funeral photo. It had his real name and his fight name written on it in Thai. His real name is Sukasem p r i e m p r a k d i Sakchai Nakpayak. Has been translated to different translations, and I'm still unsure of exactly how it would be properly translated into English. Sakchai means to win with honor. Nakpayak has been translated as Phantom Tiger, Ghost Tiger, Spirit of the Tiger, or Shadow of the Tiger. Thai can just be weird sometimes, and my Thai is not very good. And reading Thai, forget about it. So I wrote both those names down, how I thought it might be spelled in English. When I came back to the states, I decided, eh, what the heck? Let's just Google his name for the for the fun of it, see what pops up. And one photo came up. I was like, oh my god, that's him. It's it's really him. On the Google image results, I decided to click on the link. And it took me to an old Muay Thai forum that was active a long time ago. There were scans of a lot of old fighters, as well as a section that included my granduncle. It was a really cool page. At the time, I didn't really pay attention to a lot of the comments in there, and I missed some critical information. In my mind, I was saying, "Oh my God, this can't be it! Please don't let this be a dead end." I don't want this to be the only thing I find on him. So one day I said to myself, "I'm just going to give it a shot and message Sylvie von Douglas." Sorry if I got it wrong, Sylvie. I hope that's how your name is pronounced. Anyway, I know that she trains with all these awesome Muay Thai masters, and if anyone might have a clue, it could be her. And she seems like a nice enough person that might message me back. And so I asked her. Hi, Sylvie. Have you ever heard of Sakchai Nakpayak? And I told her about who he was and how he's my grandmother's brother, and I'm on this quest to find out more about him. And she sends me pictures that she took of this book she has, a different book that features my uncle in there. <clears throat> as far as I know, my uncle is published in two books that I'm aware of. So this book that Sylvie has, the book. Is titled "One, Two, Three All-Time Greatest Muay Thai Fighters of Thailand." It has his record in there, some small details about his death, and a couple pictures. I was like, "Wow, that's really cool!" 
This is like the most information I've gotten so far, you know? Later on, my, my wife purchased this book for me as a present. This book can be found in the Tice My Shop in Bangkok. After getting the book, I felt like I needed to dig some more. This little bit is just not enough. There has to be something more out there. There's got to be somebody out there that knows more. So I went back to that old forum, and I read through the comments. I ended up finding the author mentioned in the comments that featured a page that was scanned that had my uncle in it. So I said, okay, let's see if I can find this guy. His name is Alex Siu. I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name right, Alex. I'm sorry if I didn't. Anyway, sure enough, I found Alex on Facebook and I messaged him. It took him a little while to respond because he can get to be a pretty busy guy. He's actually a Muay Thai historian and author from China of all places. I think that's pretty amazing because I didn't expect that. Either way, I think it's pretty amazing what he does. When Alex was finally able to message me, he sent me all kinds of photos after I told him about who my uncle is and how I found out about him. And honestly, he has everything. All kinds of data that he's collected throughout his life that I now have. There's newspaper articles, details on his death. It's just amazing. And I'm a nobody in this sport. I just train to stay in shape with the hopes of helping other people someday. And to find this out, oh my gosh, it's insane. It's, I mean, it's crazy how famous my uncle was. From what I understand, my uncle fought everybody, anywhere, anytime, and all the big names during that era. And it's said that he's never been knocked out and is the very first Rajadam Nern middleweight champion. He's even fought Sagat's grandfather. Yes, the same Sagat that the video game Street Fighter based the character on. I will definitely get into that story as well as other fights that my uncle had and details about his life starting from his birth to death and why his death is one of the biggest mysteries in Muay Thai history. All right, it's part two of the video. And thank you everybody for sticking around this long. I really appreciate it because you're going to go on a really cool journey with me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're about to embark on a journey through time. What you are about to hear is a story that has such great drama, historical fights, romance, murder, and mystery. The year was 1927. During that time, Thailand was not known as Thailand. It was known as the Kingdom of Siam. Siam did not officially call itself Thailand until 1939. 1927 was also the year a little boy named Sukhasem Priyam Prakti was born. Sukhasem was born in the province of Chomburi, which is south of the country's capital, Bangkok. Chomburi is known for its beautiful beaches and its resort towns. A well-known one is Pattaya. During those days, life seemed very simple. There was not a whole lot of technology back then. Some people owned automobiles, but they were mostly people with a lot of money. A lot of people's lives during that time was pretty much poor. Life wasn't easy, but during those times you could survive living off the land and sometimes in the jungle. Sukhasem was definitely one of those kids that wasn't born into money. And from here on out, we're going to call him his nickname, Sam. Sam's mother was Thai and his father was Chinese. His father used to be a boxer back in China and later became a dentist and operated out of Chomburi Market. It is unknown at this time what his father's name was. Sam had a few siblings, two brothers and three sisters, and he was the youngest. It is unclear as to what year it was, but his parents ended up divorcing when either he was not born yet or 
very shortly after. His father left everyone behind, and Sam had a very difficult life growing up after that. From data provided, it said Sam has never even seen his father's face, and didn't even know what he looked like. Sam continued to live with his mother and siblings. He was just a normal kid. He liked to play with friends and do what kids do. He lived in an area called Patunam, which is pretty much a slum area. To survive and make it in the world, Sam's mother was a Kanomkai merchant. It's basically a dumpling of some sort or a dessert. Being the youngest, Sam helped his mother sell Kanomkai. His mother loved him very much, and she always referred to him as a pretty boy. When Sam was about five years old, he left with his mother to Ryong, leaving Chomburi behind in the hopes of a better life. His mother continued to sell Kanomkai on a bridge near where they lived in Ryong. Sam later eventually quit school at around fifth grade. Times weren't easy, and going to school wasn't like how it is in America. Children are only required to complete fourth or fifth grade to just know the basics. Also in Thailand, education wasn't always free. Parents have to pay for their children to get an education. That's just the way things are. When Sam was about 15 years old, he was very inspired by Muay Thai, who really wanted to train and become a fighter. His mother encouraged him to take up Muay Thai because it was in his blood, and it was a good way to make money. He started off training around gyms in the neighborhood and with friends. Sam's older brother, San, was also a Muay Thai fighter. Data provided states that his brother was an undefeated fighter. It is unclear when it happened, but San started his own fighter's gym and called it Kai Muay Nakpayak. Sam had a couple teachers that taught him Muay Thai before he started fighting under his brother's gym. These teachers' names were Bunkerd, and Kru Niem Chai Champu. When Sam first started fighting, he took up the name Luod Rayong. Luod Rayong means Rayong blood. He also had another name after that, which was Chalam Rai, and it meant bad shark. From here on, we'll call Sam by his final fight name, Sak Chai. Data provided states that Sak Chai is very polite and a shy person but has fought inside and outside the ring. Legend claims that Sakchai has never been cut by an elbow on his face and that he has won his first 12 fights before the fifth round was even over. It is also known that Sakchai was one of the most deadliest kickers in Muay Thai history. He was basically a leg destroyer, powerful in both his left and his right kicks, and was lightning fast. It is said that out of all Sakchai's fights, only one really hurt him. And that fight was with Prayut Udomsak. That fight will go on to be known as the greatest fight of 1952. In this photo, you can see Sakchai and Prayut shaking hands before the fight. This must have been during or after weigh-ins. Sakchai was actually three pounds lighter. The fight event was known as the Radium Bomb Muay Thai event, and it was an event all fans were excited about. In the fight, Sakchai dominated in the first round with his amazing kicking power and speed, forcing Prayut to be too busy defending. Somewhere in round two, Prayut tries to throw a right punch but misses. A high left kick from Sakchai caught Prayut on the neck. Bang! Prayut, while he tumbled forward trying to get a close assault or clinch, Sakchai landed a sharp elbow on the chin. Boom! Drawing instant blood. Prayut went down for an eight count. He rises and struggles through the third round, trying to resist the fists and feet of Sakchai. Prayut regains composure and momentum to narrow the gap. By round five, Prayut finally caught Sakchai with the hard straight right. Boom! And Sakchai fell three times before the bell. Prayut thus won the fight on points upon a glamorous performance. 
the fight purse for that fight gave Paryu 21,000 baht and Sakchai 18,000 baht. It was unquestionably the best fight of the year, 1952. After the fight, Sakchai went to a temple to get an amulet known as Kong Di for protection because that fight left him hurt for a while. And legend says that he was never seriously hurt ever again in the ring after that. Before the radium bomb event occurred, it was heavily promoted because it was going to be a huge event. There were plenty of news articles and flyers to get people excited. Plus there were Thai soldiers competing in the event as well. The picture you see here is a flyer stating that the fights have been postponed to another date. This next image is a news article stating that some VIPs came to watch Sakchai train, which also included Miss Thailand. Another well-known fact is that many women liked Sakchai. They found him to be a very handsome man. But contrary to belief, he wasn't a playboy. His heart was set on one woman, and one woman only. Her name was Suni Pumsloy. There's no doubt why he liked her. She's a beautiful young lady. It's not hard to imagine the way they were together, dancing together, Sakchai wearing his tuxedo, and Suni wearing her finest dress. It could be suggested they did things like any normal couple did, like going to the cinema going to watch bands playing or just going out to eat. Either way, they look like a cute couple. It is known that Sakchai loves Suni very much. What isn't known at this time is if she is still alive. And if she is still alive, she would be in her 80s. And sorry if I threw a curveball into the story. I felt it necessary to mention that he didn't go around chasing all kinds of women. He was a good guy that didn't drink or smoke, and I wanted to introduce you to the love of his life. Okay, back to the fights. Sakchai had many fights. He was just amazing at what he was doing. And I would like to apologize for not being able to do an accurate timeline of who and when he fought. I have some fights that have a little more information than just names. But before I get into those, here are some opponents and fights such I had that I currently don't have any information on other than just names. This next fight is between Sakchai and Surachai. There's not much details about how the fight took place. The approximate date of this fight is uncertain, but it is believed to be sometime in 1952. Surachai also went by the name Su Sam An, which means tiger face or tiger mask. Surachai and Sakchai were actually good friends outside the ring. This fight took place at Lampang Janwat. Even though there was not much money in this particular fight, they both gave 100% effort. It didn't hinder their performance at all. The reward was only about 500 baht. It's said that since they fought so well, they were invited back again by the mayor to fight again next year. This next fight is from April 2nd, 1953. It's Somdej versus Sakchai for the Royal Thai Army Annual Championship for the middleweight title. Sakchai was the champion the previous year. This was a very controversial fight, and what is explained here is from reports and not of my own. It was a great matchup. During the start of the fight, Somdesh tries in vain to nail the elusive kicker with his deadly left punch. 
Sakchai was dominating as usual with his explosive kicks. Boom, boom, boom. In round four, Sakchai's kicks were landing hard on the body and ribs of his fiery opponent, who was scraping air most of the time trying to hit Sakchai. By the final round, as Sakchai began to slow down from exhaustion by the fierce kicking in the previous round, Somdej rushes in. Taking advantage of Sakchai having missed the flying kick, boom! Crash Sakchai to the floor. And Somdej lands a kick to his face, bang! Leaving Sakchai half conscious on the ring apron. Most watching the drama thought Sakchai wasn't going to get up. Yet he came to and was up and took a nine count. The battle continues. But another hard left floored Sakchai again, flat on his back. Boom! But the Galleon boxer from Chonburi rose before the eight count. Badly hurt, he tumbles down again as Somdej tries to close the execution. Yet the incredible resilient Sakchai was up again and clinched till the end. Although Somdej was awarded the verdict and hence the title, fans are convinced it was not a fair outcome, as the first knockdown was a clear foul. What isn't stated in the reports was if the foul was intentional or an accident. Sometimes when you're in the heat of battle, accidents happen, and I've seen it happen. So you never know. This will be the final fight entry. Sakchai vs. Sook, which was the greatest fight in 1953. This was a very big fight for Sakchai. Sook was already a legend in Muay Thai and fought well into his 50s. Even though Sook was already a veteran in Muay Thai and fought way before Sakchai's time, he was no weak old man. Sook is known as the Giant Sook. I have to say, Sook is the most intimidating looking opponent Sakchai has ever had. Just look at him. He has tattoos all over his chest. Check out this promo. It looks like Sook is laughing at Sakchai. <laughs> Just the matchup alone, you knew this was going to be the fight you didn't want to miss. Tiger versus Giant. <laughs> Sook was known for his deadly punches and devastating elbows. Sakchai had a very famous matchmaker in his corner named Chan Summitwe that was assisting and coaching. Both fighters are fierce and looking to win because this was a huge fight and everyone was eager to see who came out the victor. During the first round, they both were testing each other's abilities and weaknesses, throwing a few shots here and there. During the second round, Sook was working his punches and getting in close to the kicker. Meanwhile, Sakchai was working on Sook's legs and kept kicking them. This was Sakchai's game plan as he knew eventually Sook would try to knock him out if he got too close. Sook was just landing so many punches on Sakchai's face till it became red. Sook was fast and was trying to get a knockout as soon as possible. Sook was just too close up on Sakchai and fighting in close proximity wasn't Sakchai's greatest attribute for this fight. Sakchai needed some space to break away from the giant's furious punches. So he teeped Sook, and he kept doing this till the round was over. By the end of round two, the points went to Sook, because Sook was just connecting pretty much every punch that he gave Sakchai. In round three, they were going at it back and forth, exchanging punches and kicks. The referee had to break them up a few times because they were both clinching a lot. Sook was trying to do what he does best and work his way in there and get close so he can get some elbows in. Sakchai kept working on Sook with his kicks. Then BOOM! Deep to the face of Sook. Blood started coming out of Sook's mouth because his tongue was cut. Sakchai kept working his kicks everywhere on the giant. BANG! 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 To the ribs of Sook. Sook was holding on to one side of his ribs to protect them, but the giant kept moving forward and punching. Round three was a draw. Both warriors generated the same amount of points. During round four, even after the massages and water intake, you can tell Sook was starting to get tired while Sakchai was still energetic. Both continued to go back and forth hitting each other. No matter how much Sakchai was doing, the giant still kept coming at him. If Sakchai wanted to win, he knew he needed to stop Sook. 
So he kept working Sook's legs. Sook was starting to show that the kicks were affecting his legs. Round four, the points went to Sokchai. In round five, Sook came out of his corner a little wobbly. It was getting a little hard to walk due to the damage taken to his legs. But Sook was determined to win and finish the fight even though he was lower in energy compared to the beginning of the fight. Somewhere during the round, Sokchai was able to get a punch in. Boom! To Sook's jaw. Sook was losing this round. Sokchai kept working his legs. Teeps and punches. Boom! Down goes Sook. But Sook rose up. Sokchai firing kicks and punches at Sook. Boom! Sook goes down. And he rises again. Sokchai continues to fire punches and kicks at Sook. Boom! Sook goes down again. Yet slowly he still rises. Even though Sook's body is badly hurt, his spirit was not broken. He has the true heart of a warrior and determined to fight to the very end. When the fifth round was over, Sokchai generated enough points and became the winner. Sokchai being much younger still could not knock out the seasoned warrior. And Sook, a veteran in this sport, was able to last all five rounds with a young and strong opponent. He kept pushing forward. This is the type of grit that true champions have. This fight was a war, and both warriors deserve respect and to be remembered forever. Sokchai's last fight was in the ring with Plian Samathong. There isn't enough information at this time to get into a detailed play-by-play -play on this fight, but it's reported that Sokchai didn't win this fight. Taking a break to enjoy life, Sokchai planned a night out with his sweetheart Suni. They had planned on an evening out alone together, but before doing that, Suni wanted to stop by and visit a friend that worked at a brothel to see how she was doing. While they were waiting inside the brothel, a few rowdy men came in. Suni and Sokchai were in the waiting area to see Suni's friend. There were no working girls around or were either busy at the time, and it was just Sokchai and Suni in there. One of the men was very rude and impatient, and he requested Suni to service him. Suni stated she doesn't work there, isn't a prostitute, and is waiting for her friend. The man said he didn't care. Sakchai stepped in and said she was with him and to back off. Everyone who knew Suni and Sakchai knew they were more than just a couple. They were referred to as Ku Pua Mia Rak. It's pretty close to husband and wife. Sakchai having enough of this conversation grabbed Suni's hand to escort them out of that place and just go out and have fun. As they were leaving towards the door, the man that was rowdy stabbed Sakchai to death in his back with a knife. It was a cowardly thing to do because this person couldn't handle Sakchai without any weapons. One man was caught but let go because lack of evidence. This is the official news report. There have been rumors that this was a setup or another gym had something to do with it. Whatever the real story is, it's a tragic end to such a talented individual. I'm definitely more interested in what I can gather about more of his life and fight details. The biggest shame in this is wasted talent and all the knowledge is, is lost. Thailand's beloved champion shall never return. Thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to Sakchai's story. As promised, I have some breaking and surprising news. I was able to make contact with family members that I have never met before from my grandmother's side. Sakchai still has one sister left alive and there is a box full of Sakchai's things which include his fight robe, maybe a belt. I am planning a trip to recover those items to be preserved in a museum. I am also planning to go out there to Thailand to track down more information to preserve more of Muay Thai history before anyone who knows anything is gone from this world. It may be rare, but I'm hoping there might be some 8mm film of Sakchai. Just look how far I've come on just a funeral photo but I can't get this information just sitting behind the computer. There were a couple of people who fought under Nakpayak Jim, and maybe we can find the Y crew if possible. Alex and I have been talking and we're pushing for a film, but before that even happens, all information that's remaining should be collected. 
And when that's done, we can do a more updated documentary that's more professional looking than what I made. I'm also looking to add Thai subtitles to this documentary because this history belongs to all people and people who love Muay Thai. I'm planning to enlist the help of the World Muay Thai Council and family to help guide me in the right direction before anything is lost. I had planned to save for this journey and go in a few months, but sadly my job recently had to let a lot of people go and I was one of them. I'm at a fork in the road. I'm sincerely asking anyone willing to help preserve history, help me in my journey of discovery. This is like some real life Indiana Jones stuff for me. And I have to go and meet these family members out of respect. They're not just going to give anything or speak to any strangers. Anyone out there hearing the story, please consider anything you can to try and help me. I need to travel to different provinces and interview people and elders, and I just can't do this on my own anymore now. I will do all I can to credit you in being a contributor for preserving culture and history. I hadn't planned to make this video until several months from now, because there was other stories and clips I needed to edit first. But I'm a firm believer in that there are higher powers at work in people's lives sometimes. I feel that this was a push to get me to hurry up because time may be running out and I'm procrastinating too long in making this video. I'm capable of finding a new job, but I haven't really had any time off since 2017. If I get a new job right away now, who knows how long it will be till I can go back to Thailand. And by then, it might be already too late. I won't be asking for way too much because I'm there on business and I will stay most of the time with family or hotel to hotel. I'm afraid to ask for a lot and I already feel shameful for asking. So I'm just going to request $2,000 so I can take a flight and have some money for food and if I need to help pay gas and shelter for anyone driving me around. I don't even know if that will even be enough. If I go over that amount, that's fine. I will use everything wisely so I can gather locations and anything I can to help provide more to the story. By the time this video is uploaded, I should have a GoFundMe page up in the link attached to the page of this video. Thank you everyone who enjoyed this documentary I put together with what I have so far. It was a lot of hard work putting this together. And if you can find it in your heart to somehow help me, I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also wanted to say thank you to Alex. I, I couldn't have done any of this without you and and i wouldn't have gotten as far as i have without you i want to thank sylvie she's been really cool in this getting the word out i want to thank my mom and my sister-in-law angie for helping me translate i want to thank my wife for being very supportive of what i'm doing right now and everybody else that's been 100 percent supportive in what i'm trying to do kapkun mak <laughs>